Hello, I'm Rudy McLennan and welcome to Shalom World News. Here are your latest news headlines from around the world. On Monday, nine federal agencies in the United States announced a new rule intended to protect the First Amendment rights of religious affiliated organisations. This now means that such organisations will be entitled to equal treatment in programmes supported by these departments, irrespective of their affiliation with a religion. Among the participating departments are those of Education, Justice, Homeland Security and the Department for International Development. The new rule has been implemented in response to a 2018 executive order called Establishment of a White House Faith and Opportunity Initiative and has been further developed since the publication of draft rules in January of this year. According to a release from the Department of Education, the rule clarifies that religious organisations do not lose their legal protections and rights just because they participate in federal programmes and activities. Previously, religiously affiliated organisations could be obliged to separate religious activities from activities supported by federal funding. Meanwhile, the Catholic Archdiocese of Washington is taking legal action against the District of Columbia in response to restrictions on public worship. A lawsuit brought by the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty on behalf of the Archdiocese argues that COVID-19 measures enforced by Mayor Muriel Bowser are unscientific and discriminatory. The suit goes on to say that religious activity is treated as a, quote, disfavoured activity in comparison with non-religious businesses and venues who have not been asked to impose equally strict measures. It details that businesses such as public libraries, stores and restaurants are asked only to enforce capacity-based limits, while religious bodies must adhere to hard caps on numbers of attendees. The Washington Archdiocese's suit is the most recent in a series of high-profile legal challenges to limits on religious activity in the United States since the outbreak of the pandemic. Just last month, the US Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four in favour of the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn and Orthodox Jewish congregations in their case against limits in the state of New York. Humanity has a responsibility to promote a culture of care which places human dignity at the centre. So spoke Pope Francis at the Online Climate Ambitions Summit on Saturday, at which 75 leaders made contributions on the topic of the climate. Continuing, the Pope said that politics and technology must unite behind an educational process which favours a cultural model of development and accountability focused on fraternity and an alliance between human beings and the environment. At the meeting which was hosted by the United Nations and which marked five years since the Paris Climate Agreement, the Holy Father pledged that the Vatican City State would reach net zero carbon emissions by the year 2050, while asking that all people across the planet commit to caring for each other and for the world. Concern for the climate has been an ever-present theme of Pope Francis' pontificate, as expressed in the second encyclical Laudato Si. In the 2015 document, the Holy Father called for greater concern for what he termed our common home. Meanwhile, the Vatican's Director of Health and Hygiene, Andrea Arcangeli, has said that the Vatican will start offering coronavirus vaccinations from January. Dr. Arcangeli said, quote, We believe it is very important that even in our small community, a vaccination campaign against the virus responsible for COVID-19 is started as soon as possible. While the Vatican City State itself is home to approximately 800 people, more than 4,000 people are employed there. Vatican residents, employees and family members over the age of 18 will be offered the Pfizer vaccine from the beginning of 2021. So far, the Pfizer vaccine is the only vaccine going through European and American approval processes. The Catholic bishops of Northeast Italy have indicated that the conferral of so-called general absolution be permissible before and during the Christmas season due to the ongoing pandemic. Also known as the third form of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, general absolution is permissible only during times of grave necessity, such as when death is believed to be imminent or when there is insufficient time to hear the confessions of individual penitents. In March, the Apostolic Penitentiary of the Roman Curia stated its belief that the COVID-19 pandemic could give rise to cases in which general absolution may be permissible. A penitent who receives general absolution must nevertheless individually confess their sins once the opportunity arises again. Archbishop Franz Lackner of the Archdiocese of Salzburg in Austria spoke out on Saturday against a ruling from the country's highest court in which it was determined that assisted suicide should no longer be a criminal offence. Labelling the court's decision as a cultural breach, the Archbishop warned that life might no longer be seen as unconditionally valuable. 
The court ordered the government to lift the current ban on euthanasia in 2021 on the grounds that the existing restriction violates the right to self-determination. Lachner, who has been head of the Austrian Bishops' Conference since replacing Cardinal Christoph Schönborn in June, said that the Church in Austria would further strengthen its commitment to providing palliative and hospice care. Angola has been dedicated to the protection of St. Joseph. The country's bishops took this step with a view to easing the economic and social suffocation of the Angolan people. Hundreds of Angolans have been arrested in recent months during anti-corruption demonstrations in the capital city of Luanda. The country is still recovering from a long civil war which only came to an end in 2002. The Angolan bishop's decision comes but days after Pope Francis announced the beginning of a year of St. Joseph, which will continue until the 8th of December 2021. In his letter, Patris Corde, which means with a father's heart, the Holy Father spoke of St. Joseph, whose faith carried him and the Holy Family through adversity, saying, even through St. Joseph's fears, God's will, his history and his plan were at work. Joseph then teaches us that faith in God includes believing that he can work even through our fears, our frailties and our weaknesses. He also teaches us that amid the tempests of life, we must never be afraid to let the Lord steer our course. A year full of many blessings, I am sure. That is all from me for now, but I will be back later on in the week with the latest news headlines from around the world. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.